Today for math, we're going to be practicing different word problems. Some of these problems will need addition to solve and some will need subtraction. This lesson is from Unit 6, Lesson 14. Now we really need to read these problems very carefully to decide which operation we should use. Should we use addition or subtraction? Let's see. Here's our first problem. Pam buys 84 daisies. She gives 36 to her sister. How many flowers does she have left? Now let's take a look and see what we know. It says that Pam buys 84 daisies. That's how many she starts with. Let's write our 84 down on our page. Now the next piece says that she gives 36 to her sister. Now, if she's giving those daisies away, do you think that we should add 36 or subtract 36? Yes, we are going to subtract 36. Anytime that we give something away, we're going to have less, not more. So our equation today is 84 minus 36, and we don't know how many she has left. So that's our mystery number. We often use the mystery box as our missing number in second grade. Now that's a great equation. We call this equation the situation equation. It's side to side and it's just what's happening in the problem. So that's our first step, but now we need to solve the equation. So over on the side, I'm going to write it in vertical form. This helps me solve the problem. So we are subtracting. Let's go ahead and solve. First, in the ones place, I have four minus six. I can't do that, so let's ungroup one of my tens and give myself 10 ones. 14 minus six, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight. And in the tens place, I have seven minus three, seven, six, five, four. In this problem, we had to subtract because our character, who was Pam, gave away her flowers. Now something very important is we need to write our answer and a label. So 48 daisies. Let's take a look at the next problem. There are 475 vehicles in the parking lot. 218 are not cars and the rest are cars. How many vehicles are cars in the parking lot? Have you ever heard of the word vehicle before? A vehicle is anything that someone can drive. That could be a car, a motorcycle, maybe a small van or a bus, anything that could be in a parking lot. So we know that in total, there are 475 vehicles. I think I'm going to make a math mountain because I know my total, and as we talked about a few lessons ago, our total is the king of our mountain. So that number gets to go at the top because no one can be bigger than the total. Now there's two categories. There are cars and not cars. Let's see what else we know. 218 are not cars. So let's put our 218 over here. And our missing piece in this equation are our cars. We don't know how many that is. Now, when we look at this math mountain, do you think we need to add or subtract these two numbers? Well, if we add, 
we're going to get a really big number that's bigger than the king. Can anyone be bigger than the king in our math mountain? No, it can't. So let's go ahead and subtract 475 minus 218. We start in the ones place. Five minus eight. I can't do that. So let's go next door, ungroup one of my tens. So now I have 15 ones. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, seven. Now let's go to the tens. Five minus one. Oh, I gave it away. Six minus one. That's five. And four minus two. That's two. So we have 257 cars. That's our final answer for this problem. Jamie has a crate of oranges for the party. A crate is like a big wooden box. 128 spill on the floor. And there are 119 oranges still in the crate. How many oranges were in the crate at the beginning? Wow, I wonder what happened that Jamie spilled some of these oranges. Now, I heard a very key word in this problem. We don't hear this word very often. It's asking how many oranges were in the crate at the beginning. That tells me that we don't know how many there were to start with. So our situation equation is going to look interesting in this one. We do not know our first number. We don't know how many there were. Now, it also said that 128 spill on the floor. If they're spilling on the floor, I think I'm going to subtract those 128 oranges because they're coming out of the crate. And there are 119 left inside of the crate. So we're looking for this first number. Now, the strategy that I like to use is I like to use a math mountain. Now, do you remember a few lessons ago who was the number that always likes to be first when we subtract because they are very greedy? Do you remember who that number is? It's the king of the math mountain. The king loves to be first when we are subtracting. So that means in this problem, I do not know my king. He is my missing number. But I can take these other two numbers and plug them in at the bottom, 128 and 119. Now, if I know both of my bottom numbers, but I don't know my king, what do you think we should do to find the king? The king has to be a big number. Yes, we need to add to find the king. 128 plus 119. We're adding in this problem to find the big number. Here we go. Let's start in the ones place. We have eight plus nine. Now I'm gonna use my touch points. Start at nine and count up eight. Nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 ones, that means I made a new 10, didn't I? Two, three, four, no new hundreds. And one plus one, two. That means at the beginning, I had, or I'm sorry, Jamie had 247 oranges. 
that was before they spilled out. So even though in this problem we had a subtraction sign, we actually had to add to find that total and that top number. Miss Debussy collected 285 seashells while at the beach last year. That is 92 fewer seashells than the year before. How many seashells did she collect the year before? Hmm, I saw a very interesting word in there. Did you spot that same word I saw? Fewer. Now, sometimes second graders, we get confused because we think, well, if it says fewer, we must be subtracting because fewer means less. And you are correct about that. Fewer does mean less. But it says that last year, she had 285 seashells. That 285 is 92 fewer than the year before. This really sounds like some comparison bars to me. Do you remember doing comparison bars in class? Let's make some comparison bars. Now, when we do comparison bars, we have two chocolate bars and a glass of milk. The, big, the top one's always bigger. Now, it says that we have last year, so I'm going to use an L for last year, and the year before. Let's use the letter B for that year. Now, Miss Debussy had 285 seashells last year. Now, last year it says that is 92 fewer. So that means that last year gets the smaller bar because it's fewer. Then that must mean that my year before needs to go up at the top. Okay, now here's the tricky part. We have our, our letters label, but now we need to decide where the numbers go. Now the first number, 285, that was for last year. Let's put it in the bar for last year. Okay, that one's good. Now the next number is 92 fewer. There's one of those magic words. Do you remember where more or fewer goes in our comparison bar? Yes, it goes in our circle. That means that our number that we're missing is our big number at the top. Remember, it looks like a math mountain. What do you think we should do to find that top number? Yes, we need to add because the top number is the big number, the king of the math mountain. So we need to add to solve. Five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, that means we made a new hundred. And two plus one, that's three. 